today we are going to see the topic ionic equilibrium ionic equilibrium this last week we have discussed chemical kinetics chemical kinetics that lesson was over now we are going to see the new lesson so volume 2 8th lesson right ionic equilibrium so we have come across many chemical compounds many chemical compounds for example uh, in our blood in our blood uh, carbonic acid and uh, bicarbonate they maintain the ionic equilibrium right and uh, some examples we can see so mostly we have uh, used in our day to day life uh, milk contains lactic acid then tea contains tannic acid vinegar acetic acid apple malic acid then lemon citric acid grapes tartaric acid right uh, not only the acid some base bases also we are using for example the sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide in soap industry then sulfuric acid is used in fertilizer industry setting of chemicals right so mostly it is used as a by product okay now how to find the acid how to find the acid the acid gives sour taste sour taste and the base base it gives bitter taste bitter bitter taste right okay in chemical laboratory in chemical laboratory how to find the acid and base suppose the bottles the two bottles consist of some solution one bottle has acid but another bottle has a drinking water so how to identify which one is acid which one is a drinking water if you have a ph paper ph paper the blue litmus paper suppose when we dip in acid it gives red color it gives red color by using the ph paper we can find whether it is acid or not right suppose if you have any base basic solution the red color litmus paper dipped in the basic solution it gives a blue right okay um, now another one type we can check the acid or base suppose any indicator the phenolphthalein indicator phenolphthalein the indicator acts as a organic acid organic acid which which substance we are going to find whether it is acid or base the small amount we have to take and a little bit we have to add the phenolphthalein indicator immediately the pink color will appear if you have the phenolphthalein indicator we can find the acid okay these are the classical concepts are not adequate or not adequate to explain explain right so the scientists are developed the acid base concept so based on their behavior based on their behavior so what are the scientists first arrhenius concept arrhenius concept the second lori bronsted theory is nothing but proton theory then third one lewis concept lewis concept the last uh, strength of the acid and the base so how to determine the strength of acid and base okay uh, these four topic in this section we are going to discuss the first arrhenius concept arrhenius concept what kind of definition the arrhenius is using and what are the limitation he was saying so we can see first define arrhenius concept 
Arrhenius concept. Here, he has given one equation. The hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid is dissolving water, dissolving water, the charge separation occurs, H plus and Cl minus, Cl minus, right? The state hydrochloric acid, so gaseous state, right? When it dissolves in water, it gives a aqueous H plus ions and then Cl minus ion. From that, he said, the dissociate to give hydrogen ion, hydrogen ions in water. Actually, what he said, which substance donate H plus, that kind of substance is called acid. Right? So, another one example is using for base calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide molecular formula, we have known CaOH twice. The calcium hydroxide dissolve in water, it gives a charge separation, calcium 2 plus and 2 moles of OH minus ions. It is called hydroxyl ions. Which substance the donate OH minus ions in water, that substance is called base. So, donating H plus is called acid, donating OH minus is called a base. This is Arrhenius concept. Arrhenius concept. Okay. According to his concept, it has some limitation. Limitation. Because the Arrhenius theory does not explain the behavior of acid and bases in non aqueous non aqueous solvent. Non aqueous solvent, for example, acetone and a tetrahydrofuran. These two are non-polar solvent. These two are non-polar solvent. So, what he said in his concept, the substance has to be dissolved in only water. So, water is a polar solvent, but he did not say about non-polar solvent, non-aqueous solvent, non-aqueous solvent. One example I used to give, suppose a lemon juice, it dissolved, can you dissolve in acetone and then can we taste what is a whether the sour taste is coming or not, is unable to check it. That's why his concept involved in the limitation, right? So the polar substance has to be dissolved in polar solvent. HCl and the HNO3, these two are acid substance, dissolved in only the polar solvent water, right? But he insisted. And you have to choose, he said, you have to choose only the water, polar solvent. But he did not say about non aqueous solvent, non aqueous solvent, such as acetone and tetrahydrofuran. Okay, second point this theory does not account for the basicity of the substance like ammonia. So, we know that ammonia is a base, ammonia is a base. But the substance does not donate any OH minus ions. So, here does not possess OH group. OH group does not possess hydroxyl group. But it is actually it is a base. According to his concept, according to his concept, this is wrong, right? Okay. The what are the limitation of Arrhenius concepts is very, very important to more question. Third, Lori Bronster theory. Lori Bronster's theory. So, second sign is the proposed about acid base concept. Is that it is equal to proton theory. The Lori Bronster theory is equal with the proton theory. Okay. He said, what is acid? The substance has a tendency to donate a proton to another substance. So, what he said, acid means the tendency to donate a proton to another substance. That is called a proton donor. Suppose base, how, how we define the tendency to accept a proton from other substance. The tendency to accept a proton from other substance. That is called a proton acceptor. So, proton means what? Proton means H plus. 
So which substance donate a proton in aqueous solvent? Aqueous solvent is water. That is called an Arrhenius concept. But the tendency to donate a proton, same concept, but to another substance. Another substance. This belongs to Lori Bronsted theory. Likewise, the tendency to accept a proton, H plus proton, from other substance, it is called a proton acceptor. So, these two concepts come under Lori Bronsted theory. For example, hydrochloric acid, it dissolves in water, dissolves in water, it donates a proton, HCl. From HCl, H plus is coming out. It is taken by H2O. H2O. The oxygen has a lone pair, so easily bind with the hydrogen. So H3O plus hydronium ion will form. Here the H3O plus behaves as an acid. Here H2O acts as a base. Why? Because it received the H plus from HCl. So Cl minus also considered as a base. Right? So another one. Example in this equation when ammonia is dissolved in water, so ammonia came under the limitation of Arrhenius concept, but he make the ammonia as a merits, their demerits here merits when ammonia is dissolved in water, is it accept a proton from water, it accept a proton from water. And it gets NH4 plus and OH minus. So, in this case, ammonia acts as a base and then H2O is acid because ammonia nitrogen has a lone pair. The lone pair is donated to hydrogen and finally we can get the NH4 plus ion, NH4 plus ion, ammonium ion, right, and remaining OH minus. Okay. So, regarding the lori Bronsted theory, so we can find conjugate base and conjugate acid. Conjugate base and conjugate acid. So, what are conjugate base and conjugate acid? Suppose, we will provide one equation. In this equation, we have to find it conjugate acid base pair and conjugate acid base pair. Okay, the hydrochloric acid, hydrochloric acid dissolve in water, H3O plus ion and Cl minus ion. Now, already we have seen this equation. Now, the conjugate base, conjugate base and then conjugate acid we have to see. Cl minus, Cl minus is a proton acceptor, act as a base. Cl minus is a conjugate base of the acid. HCl. So, Cl minus get from get from HCl. HCl, right. So, HCl acts as an acid. From that, we can get a Cl minus. So, Cl minus acts as a base. Why it is given proton acceptor? It carries negative charge. So, ready to accept a H plus ion. That is why proton acceptor is given, right. Likewise, HCl. HCl is a conjugate acid of Cl minus. So, from, from HCl we can get Cl minus, likewise we can get a proton donor, donor means we donate H plus, donate H plus, that is why it is acted as a conjugate acid of Cl minus. These two are conjugate acid base pair, right. Next, H3O plus. H3O plus hydronium ion proton donor proton donor act as an acid act as an acid wherever in which group you are going to find whether it is an acid or base the electron deficient or positive charge we can assume as an acid H3O plus proton donor then likewise H2O H2O is a conjugate base of the H3O plus so, from water we can get a H3O plus, so proton donor. The H3O plus, from that we can get a H2O proton acceptor, act as a base. Here the oxygen carries lone pair of electron. 
load power of electron that is why act as a base here electron diffusion it carries a positive charge high 3 o plus that is why proton donor act as a acid these two are conjugate acid base pair okay so what are the limitation of lowry bronsted theory what are the limitations of lowry bronsted theory the rns limitation also we have seen likewise we can see the limitation of lowry bronsted theory the substance bf3 boron trifluoride and alcl3 aluminum chloride so both substance do not donate the proton because there is no hydrogen h plus is called a proton but these two substance don't have any proton but are called as is behave as a acids behave as acid but his concept lowry bronsted concept did not explain why it is called as a acid according to concept this is wrong okay so later the third scientist came his name louis louis concept so before we see the louis concept some examples the conjugate pair conjugate acid base pair we will see suppose ammonium ion dissolve in water hydronium ion and ammonia will form so so simply we can find it the group or atoms or molecules are carrying the charge charge whether it is a positive means that is acid negative and the neutral molecule neutral molecules having a load power of electron the oxygen has a load power of electron to act as a base so three examples i have given one is for ammonium ion dissolving water then sulfuric acid dissolve in water then acetic acid dissolve in water so what is acid and what is base from that what is conjugate acid base pairs okay now the lewis concept we will see the lewis acid lewis acid is a positive ion or an electron deficient molecule electron deficient molecule we call as lewis acid a lewis base may be anion or neutral molecule with at least one lone pair of electron okay here here in this equation in this equation two reactant we are using so one is a lewis base another one is a lewis acid here the substance does not release any h plus does not does not donate any h plus but we can say acid and base so actually what is the concept this lewis concept right how can we say that in ammonia nitrogen has a lone pair of electron nitrogen has a lone pair of electron so when we see the ammonia nitrogen atomic number 7 so how to write the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p3 2p3 so we know that the three hydrogen is bonded with the nitrogen in outermost orbital outermost orbit right so in the outermost orbit second orbit 2s2 2p3 in the 2p3 three unpaired electron after the electron accommodated in the particular orbital the three unpaired electron is ready to bond with the three hydrogen even if the three hydrogen bonded with the nitrogen the 2s2 lone pair electron is having right so electron rich center the nitrogen is having so ready to donate the two electron right that's why it is act as a base suppose we have to take a boron trifluoride boron trifluoride boron trifluoride act as a lewis acid how can we say that how can we say that so when we write the electronic configuration of boron atomic number 5 how do we should write the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p1 2p1 here how many fluorine is going to bond with the boron three fluorine so we need three unpaired electron this one electron shift here 2p y so we can get a three unpaired electron even if three unpaired electron bonded with the three fluorine three fluorine one vacant orbital is there one vacant orbital this is electron deficient so ready to receive the electron from the ammonia that's why 
ammonia in nitrogen is able to donate a two electron the bf3 in boron ready to receive the two electron that's why it's called as a bf3 act as a lewis acid and the ammonia act as a lewis base okay electron division means lewis acid electron pair don donor lewis base so what are the examples that we have seen according to that they have made the paragraph in boron as a vacuum two orbital to accept the lone pair of electron donated by ammonia to form a new coordinate covalent bond so in the products that we see the two electron donated by the nitrogen to boron it mentioned with the arrow mark this arrow mark means is called coordinate covalent bond we have already learned that coordination compounds the ligand right is a lewis base and the central metal atom ryan that accept a pair of electron from the ligand begins as lewis acid <coughs> okay here after studying the lewis concept lewis concept so we can make the difference between lewis acid and lewis base lewis acid and lewis base the electron deficient molecule such as boron trichloride aluminum chloride and the beryllium chloride these are called electron deficient molecules comes under lewis acid so when we write electronic configuration it has a empty orbital beryllium has only empty orbital aluminum has empty orbital and the boron has empty orbital ready to receive the two electron from the base right that's what is called electron deficient molecule the lewis bases lewis bases the molecules with one or more lone pair of electron so ammonia nitrogen has lone pair of electron and water h2o so act as a lewis base two lone pair of electron and uh, ro which means alcohol alcohol central formula ro which oxygen has a lone pair of electron and ror ether ether right ror means ether any alkyl group we have to substitute the place of <coughs> r it is called ether oxygen has a lone pair of electron likewise amide amide alkyl group r bonded with the nh2 it is called amide the nitrogen has a lone pair of electron so lone pair of electron is having that kind of molecules act as a lewis base and the point number 2 all metal ions or atoms we know that metal always carrying a positive charge positive charge what is the meaning electron deficient so comes under lewis acid all anion f minus cl minus cn minus scn minus so42 minus these are all carrying a negative charge comes under lewis bases then molecules contain polar double bond polar double bond so so2 co2 so3 when we draw the structure of the molecule it is a double bond polar double bond means the bond will cleave and positive negative charge will occur right so the positive charge means electron deficient is occur that's why so2 co2 so3 come under lewis acid then uh, a molecule that contain carbon carbon multiple bond suppose multiple bond means is ready to donate a negative charge negative means electron rich center rich donate negative charge so ethylene and uh, alkyne these are comes under lewis bases ethene and ethyne right then molecule in which central atom can expand its octet due to availability of empty d orbital when sifo sfo fecl3 silica tetrafluoride sulfur tetrafluoride and ferric chloride these are the compounds the central metal atom has a vacant orbital vacant orbital means what is the meaning electron deficient so comes under lewis acid all metal oxide all metal oxide oxide has a two lone pair right after bonding with the calcium and magnesium and two sodium the lone pair means it has a lone pair of electron so all metal oxide also comes under lewis base then carbonium ion ch3 thrice c plus and the carbon ion ch3 minus here positive minus charge is coming so the charge positive means electron deficient negative means electron rich so these are the points 
these are the points we should write suppose the question what are the difference between lewis acid and the lewis base it is asked okay now question number 9 we will see identify the lewis acid and the lewis base in the following reaction here one equation is given it is a coordination compounds coordination compounds of product right the chromium 3 plus ion react with the 6 moles of water it gives it gives hexa aqua chromium 3 ion hexa aqua chromium 3 ion okay here in the hydration of ion hydration means what addition of water each of six water molecule donate a pair of electron so six molecules six water molecules in oxygen are ready to donate the pair of electron to the central metal atom central metal atom chromium okay uh, from that we can say lewis acid is chromium 3 plus and the lewis base water so which one is a donor h2 is a donor and which one is a acceptor chromium 3 plus acceptor so from that we can guess it which one is a lewis base and which one is a lewis acid Question number 10. I need to be the Lewis acid and the Lewis base in the following reaction. Here two equations are given. So you have to find in the reactant side which one is the Lewis acid and Lewis base. Calcium oxide. Calcium oxide. So already we have seen the difference between the Lewis base and the Lewis acid. All metal oxide comes under Lewis base. So oxygen has a lone pair. So CO2. CO2 means what? Condition of polar double bond. When we write the resonance structure, it gives positive negative charges. So positive is obtaining. It acts as a electron deficient. So it comes at the Lewis acid. Okay. Here, so dimethyl ether. Dimethyl ether. R O R. General formula we have used in the difference. Difference between Lewis acid and Lewis base. So ether is coming. Ether. Oxygen carries a load by Lewis base. Then AlCl3. AlCl3, aluminium has an empty orbital, electron deficient, so Lewis acid. Right? So, reason, what is that? I have given CO, CaO, calcium oxide is a metal oxide, CO2 contains polar double bond, and AlCl3, electron deficient. Now, we will see question number 11. So, what are the strength of acid and base? So, how to find the strength of acid and base? The strength of acid and base can be determined by the concentration. The strength, the word means concentration. Concentration of H3O plus ions is for acid and OH minus ion. So, base produced per mole of the substance dissolved in water. Suppose we have to prepare one mole substance. How much OH ions are present in the one mole? That is called the strength of base. How much phi 3 O plus ion present in the one more substance? That is called acid, strength of acid. So, question number 12. What are the strong acid and weak acid? How to find it? Strong acid and weak acid. The strong acid, strong acid is the one that is almost completely dissociated in water. Suppose hydrochloric acid or nitric acid dissolve in water, the charge is separation, so thoroughly dissociated, H plus ions under Cl minus ions, thoroughly dissolved, we can say that. That is called strong acid. Suppose we take the weak acid, so partially dissociated in water, formic acid, ICOH and acetic acid, acetic acid. So partially only is dissolved, partially dissociated, so thoroughly the H plus ion it will not completely dissociated into water. These two statements we have to keep this in your mind, right? Completely dissociated in water means strong acid, partially dissociated in water, weak acid. Now, question number 13. How will you determine the strength of acid? How will you determine the strength of acid? So, according to the equation, According to the equation, here general equation we have written. 
The Kachiye means Kachisir, as you assume, strong acid Kachisir, right? Kachisir we are going to uh, determine. For example, Kachisir is going to determine whether it is a uh, it is a strong acid, but what is the strength of the acid we are going to calculate. So, how to write? According to the equation, we should write product concentration divided by reactant concentration. HCl dissolved in water, it gives HCO plus and Cl minus. In the place of Cl minus, A minus is given. In the place of HCl, HCl is given, right? So, product concentration divided by reactant concentration means equilibrium constant, ionic equilibrium constant K. So, K equal to HCO plus multiplied by A minus, the square bracket means concentration divided by HCA and H2 it is given in the square bracket, this is equation 1. Okay. Next, the concentration of water is large, so negligibly small. So, we did not consider the water concentration, it is assumed to be 1, right? So, now the Ka, A for acid. H3O plus A minus concentration divided by HA concentration. This is equation 2. Now, the hydronium ion concentration and the base carries negative charge A minus base concentration multiplication divided by acid concentration. It gives a value. That value is a K. The K value, the K value for HCl <coughs> is 2 into 10 to the power 6 is very, very high. The Ka value for mostly strong acid is giving high value, high value. According to the value, according to the value, we can understand and we can determine it is a strong acid, strong acid. Suppose we consider formic acid, formic acid and acetic acid, formic acid and acetic acid, the Ka value is very, very low. 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 4 is for formic acid and acetic acid Ka value 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 very low right. So, conclusion the Ka value Ka value greater than 10 means strong acid and less than 10 means weak acid Ka value less than 10 weak acid. So, formic acid and acetic acid Usually we don't know these two are weak acid partially dissociated H plus ions, right? No. Let us consider the dissociation of HCl <coughs> in aqueous solution. Aqueous solution. This equation already we have seen. From HCl, you can get a Cl minus, and the H2O you can get a H3O plus. So acid one. H3O plus AC2, then Cl minus base 1, here yeah, base 2. But here, you have to keep the point in your mind, Cl minus ion base 1 has only a negligible tendency to accept a proton from H3O plus. Cl minus acts as a base, but does not have a tendency to accept a proton from H3O plus hydronium ion. That means conjugate base of a strong acid is a weak base. Conjugate base of a strong acid is a weak base. So, Cl minus considered as a weak base because base means have to accept a proton quick, right? But it is negligible tendency to accept a proton from H3O plus. Here, I have given some examples, the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. The following table illustrates the relative strength of conjugate acid base pairs. HCLO4, perchloric acid, HCL, hydrochloric acid, H2SO4, sulfuric acid, HNO2, nitrous acid. These are all called strong acid. So, they are ready to donate H plus ions to the water, right? That's why strong acid, otherwise you can say completely dissociated, completely dissociated. The next hydronium ion H3O plus, H3O plus, HNO2, then hydrofluoric acid, HF, then acetic acid, CH3COOH, these are all 
weak acid partially dissociated then oh minus oh minus usually base but very weak acid does not provide h plus ions from oh minus that's why called very weak acid h2 molecule so molecule formation does not release a h plus ions that's why very weak acid then right side we see perchlorate ion clo4 minus cl minus hso4 minus no3 minus these are all very weak base very weak base then water and no2 minus f minus then cg3o minus acetate ion these are all very weak base then nh2 minus o2 minus h minus are strong base ready to donate the lone pair of electron that is called a strong base. Weak base means there is less tendency to donate the lone pair of electron. Okay, thank you.